If you're using a library like Mediator, the next logical step under certain situations is from moving in process to moving out of process. I'm going to talk about what those situations are and how moving out of process works. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design and in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So to demonstrate the in-process model, what I'm going to be using is the Mediator library. I'll provide a link in the description for a video that I did on why you should use or consider Mediator and one reason why you should not. This video is really more an extension on why you may not want to use Mediator and what the alternatives are. So when I talk about in process, I have an ASP.NET controller here with an action and I'm going to be creating a new place order object. So this is our place order uh, class here that I'm making a new instance of. And what I'm doing is I'm sending that request uh, to the Mediator. Mediator and in turn, what it will do is in process, it will call this handle method passing that instance of our place order. This is normally where you would do any work related to that request. In my example, what I'm doing is I'm gonna be throwing an exception. All right, so let's run this. And then what I'm gonna do is I will run a request in Postman. So this is running, jump over to Postman. I'm just gonna make a post request to that route and as you'd expect, because I'm throwing an exception, I'm getting a 500 error. So returning a 500 error may be exactly what you actually want to do. You, there's something, there's some bug, there's some issue that you want to let the client know and capture that 500 error. But maybe you don't actually. Maybe you would rather return back the client a 201 created and have all this work done in this handler separately, meaning done in isolation out of process, in a completely different process. When you do that, you can then get the ability to do things like retries, how you want to handle these particular errors. So that's one of the reasons why you may want to move out of process is think about some of the requests that you have. Do you need to let the client know, the consumer know that when they make that request, that it actually worked right away? Sometimes the answer may be no. So to move this out of process, I'm going to use Brighter. There's different libraries you can use to do this. I'm choosing Brighter to use as this example because it can do both in process and out of process. So I'm going to refactor the code now to remove Mediator and use Brighter instead. So what I've done is completely refactored this code to remove Mediator and now use uh, Brighter. So instead of using the iMediator, I'm using a command processor. I still have the exact same place order object. It now implements iCommand instead of iRequest. It's pretty simple. I'm just calling send on the command processor, and this is doing exactly what Mediator would do, and it's still in process right now. So like I said, it can do in process and out of process. So my handler just changed a little bit. Instead of um, the I request handler, I now just implement the request handler. I have my handle method, and I'm pretty much doing the exact same thing, just throwing. So nothing really has changed in terms of behavior. I'm still throwing and I'm still gonna get a 500 because I'm doing everything in process. So to get this starting to work out of process, I'm gonna do a couple things. The first uh, is really simple. It's just instead of calling send, I'm actually gonna call post. And what this does is that this is actually gonna send our message instead of in process and invoking it right away, it's actually gonna send this to a message broker. So the message broker I'm gonna be using is RabbitMQ. I just have this installed locally in a Docker container, and I have this configured within Brighter already to be using it. So I'm gonna do one other thing now is that since we've moved out of process, meaning that when the request comes in and it calls posts, it's immediately gonna send that uh, message to RabbitMQ and then it immediately return a no content it's not actually gonna invoke this handler. That's gonna be done outside of this process, outside of this request. So the cool thing you can do when you start doing this and you start getting those this execution in isolation is there's gonna be things that you wanna add like retries, for example. So I just wanted to show how that works is I can add a policy and I'm gonna do a command processor dot retry policy and I'm gonna set it to three, for example. So when this fails, I'm gonna, it's autom Brighter's automatically gonna retry this three different times. So I'm gonna add a breakpoint here so that we can actually see that happen. All right, one more thing before I actually run this is since it's out of process, what process is actually gonna pick up the message from RabbitMQ 
and actually run that handler. So I've been using this loosely coupled monolith project, if you've seen any of my other videos. So we've been working in the ASP.NET Core project. I also have another uh, project called Worker, and this is just a console app that is has a background service in it. And I have it configured with Brighter to use RabbitMQ to be a consumer. So it's the one gonna be consuming the messages to actually execute them. So I have basically Brighter configured to do that. So that's why this breakpoint, when we hit it, will actually be running in this process, not in this process when it actually occurs. So let's give it a run. All right, so if I look at, I am running ASP.NET Core as well as running the worker. Jump over to Postman. And when I send this, I will get back a 204, even though we're throwing exception because it's happening separately. So there's our 204. And when I jump back to uh, Rider, if I'm debugging, we can see we're not doing anything. We got a request. Um, it's completely fine. But the worker is now what's broke here. And this is going to fail. But because we have uh, three retries, so if I jump over this, that was our first execution. This is our first retry, second retry, third retry. Now we're done. So there's many different things you can do with this now is, especially after our three retries and this is failing, you could do things like have a separate fallback that you have code that does whatever you want it to do when it's not successful. And that could be even something like moving the message to a dead letter queue. Moving out a process does a couple things for you. It allows you to handle that work in isolation and then let you decide that work in isolation, how you want to handle things like retries or exceptions and fallbacks to those exceptions. The same thing applies here with events. When you start publishing events, you're publishing a message and it's handled just like any other message, whether it's a command. Um, the only difference with events is that you can have multiple consumers of that event. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more software architecture related videos.